Hello again. Today I'll be telling you the story of the quaint little medieval war crime village of Badgerhold. But I suppose I could just call it the medieval village of Badgerhold, since war crimes weren't really a thing back in the good old days. We'll be following the first 100 days of our five colonists and anyone else they find, recruit or enslave along the way. And just who are those five colonists? Well, we've got Camcol, a very large man with a burning passion for cutting people up as well as digging. On the side, he'll also quite happily research or tend the farms. A very well-balanced individual. Nele will end up as the colony's main researcher as well as being the only one of our starting five that's at all capable of social work. Also quite happy to cut people up. Very good. Verea will mainly handle the crops, but is also pretty good at crafting and also has a little skill in medical. Also, once again, totally happy to smack people around. Brakeso is a very general colonist, but primarily he's a skilled shot as well as having a burning passion for animal work. The colony will start with chickens, so that's handy. And last but not least, we have Bill Comneo, who'll handle the cooking work alongside construction and crafting. Okay, introductions out the way, where are we going? These fine medieval folks are staking their claim to a patch along the river here in the Lower Aston Hills. The area isn't necessarily that interesting, but it's pleasant enough. We've started right next to an ancient danger that I suspect we won't be touching for quite a long time, if ever. Okay, so while they start to set up the basics, let's talk about all of this medieval stuff. A lot of you modding addicts will have already assumed, but in case you don't know, I'm using the Medieval Overhaul mod in conjunction with the storyteller Maynard Medieval to restrict myself and all other factions to medieval tech. Speaking of tech, the first thing we've researched here at our research spot, which is just, well, look, it's just a designated thinking space, I guess. Anyway, Nele, with help from a few others at times, was able to sit there staring at the wall long enough to figure out the basics of agriculture. The overhaul doesn't actually force you to research agriculture before you can plant crops at all, but I figured it would be more in the spirit of things if I did. So now we can plough soil and plant mushrooms, garlic, onions and lentils. I'm also going to plant heel root, because we'll all die if I don't. You can take this brief opportunity to head below and either call me a coward for growing heel root or compliment my dedication to the medievality by abstaining from vanilla food crops. And while you're down there, you might as well like the video too. Wow, I sure am a YouTuber. Anyway, it's probably a good idea to build a palisade wall quite quickly since we're likely to be fairly evenly matched with any early raiders, at least in terms of armament. To be fair though, it also just looks cool, which plays a larger part in my decision making than it perhaps should. Now, thanks to the aforementioned crop abstinence, we're suffering a bit on the food front, which can be sorted out day by day through hunting, but we'll also buy food from the occasional visitors whenever they're willing to sell it. But at least we're just a bit hungry. Our only rooster, Oliana, has it far worse, suffering from a random heart attack. Thankfully, swift intervention from Brakeso has him recovered and back to his work near immediately. Similarly horny are Nele and Bill Comnia, who've become lovers, They'll have to wait until marriage though, since we're decent, godly folk here in Badgerhold. Oh yeah, our religion. There's not much to say about it, honestly. Simply named Theofaith, they worship Bauks, who allegedly birthed all humans in a grand accident. Their creed is a simple one. Believing themselves to be the supreme ideologian, they aim to spread the word of Bauks across the lands and grow their ranks through either recruitment or slavery, whichever seems more convenient at the time. So here we are, a couple of days in. Walls are up, the air smells of drying meats for human feed and grasses for chicken feed. There's just one thing missing from the smellscape. The rancid piss smell of tanning liquor. You see, with medieval overhaul, in order to get that leather you so desperately desire from the animals you've hunted or farmed, you need to tan their hides. A lengthy process that requires a stinky fluid made from any number of rotting ingredients. We'll actually just be using wood, though. This is where we're finally prompted to name the faction. We already know the settlement is called Badgerhold, so I decided to name the faction the Damned Ramblers, for no particular reason. After that, I set up a small trap hallway, which should see off our early foes, be they human or animal. Or human-animal. A single woman with a shiv arrived shortly afterwards from one of the local bands of nasty folk to test our newly built trap hallway. 
Annoyingly, I decided to send out Brakeso to take some pot shots at her with his bow as she approached. However, it turns out these palisade gates take longer to open and close than I had expected. So Brakeso got shivved a little bit before Varea and Nele arrived to put a stop to these shenanigans. I'd have captured her for recruiting if it weren't for the whole destroyed lung thing, so we'll just take her clothes and let her slowly die out here instead. At this point I realised that A. I need way more crops, and B. You don't get much leather, with a measly 11 soft fur coming from a gazelle. And then Brakeso went on an insulting spree, probably because he was shivved about seven times a few hours ago. Luckily he fixated his anger on Bill Komno, who was having absolutely none of it, and immediately knocked him out. Good job. Nele was clearly impressed by this because then they decided they'd get engaged. More importantly though, sweet heaping piles of lentils have flowed into our storehouse. Finally a substantial quantity of food. I thought, for about 5 minutes, until I realised that it takes 100 lentils to make 4 meals. Yeah, we need to do some more hunting and plant more crops. On the bright side, some spacecraft chunks have just landed which can be deconstructed just as usual for steel and components, which are otherwise much harder resources to get in medieval overhaul. Speaking of steel, people are getting all funny about not having a temple and everything that goes with it. The trouble is, the ideogram requires more steel than we currently have, even with the recent salvage, so it'll have to wait. Anyway, more importantly, look at those little chickies. How lovely. Peep peep little chickies. Grow up nice and quick now. The townsfolk are hungry. With rustic furniture researched and a half decent number of animals hunted, it's time to make some fur beds. Skipping straight over the less comfortable variants, we only have the best at badger hold, in terms of bedding. Pretty much everything else here right now is garbage actually, but it's our garbage, and those bastards from the Anus Empire are trying to take it from us. Are we going to stand for that? No, of course we're not. Are you ready to fight to protect what's you? Oh, they, they died in the traps. Well, fair enough. Everyone back to work. And now the goddamn chickens have the flu. It's bird flu all over again. Alright, we've researched smithing. That's good. We'll get to it in a moment though, because a woman has just fallen from the sky. She's pretty good too, so we'll quickly build a bed in this room we were going to use as a temple and capture her for recruitment. And she's dead. Never mind, Nelly and Bill Komnio are finally getting married, but don't think this means I'm going to let them share a bed. Oh no, we don't want any babies here yet. Maybe later. Some of the chickens are actually succumbing to their avian flu at this point, which is a little sad, but ultimately it just means we get some food now. And that, kids, is how you get zoonosis. But let's not worry about it too much. Because here's a heat wave, which is an annoying but entirely solvable problem thanks to good old passive coolers. This would be a problem in a more sparse biome, but with plenty of wood to spare here, we're actually totally fine. With that in mind though, it's probably time to start a little forestry project so we can sustain plenty of wood without having to go out and harvest it manually. Everyone decided now that it's time for a party, and sure, why not? Some of the grumpier members of the colony could use the boost. Some uninteresting stuff happened for a few days now until a raid from House Oswin arrived. Now it's just one guy, but he's wearing some pretty heavy armour. I want that. Gimme the armour, Bacchus. Come on. Gimme. Whatever. I'm sure I'll have it just as soon as he dies in the trap hallway. Just as, uh... Come on. Oh, good, I thought we were gonna have to actually fight him for a moment there. And it just knocked him down so the armour isn't tainted. Fantastic. Let's have Cam Cole put that on right away. On a whim now, I decided to take up beekeeping which first involved smashing up some wild hives and stealing their queens before stuffing them into apiaries. Far more interestingly though is this Lindworm, a gigantic snake thing, which has entered the area whilst a thrombo is also here wandering around, and they've near immediately started fighting. Woo! Kaiju fight, yeah! It's looking like the thrombo's gonna come out on top here. Oh yeah, definitely. Just gotta send out Brakeso to finish the job and now we've got some snake meat and scaly leather aplenty. I thought it might drop something like a valuable fang or something, but no, just dodgy meat and green leather. Alright, so somewhere in the middle of all that we did finally set up a little smithy. So let's start using it to make a massive axe for Varea. He works in the fields most of the time and somehow this will help with that. 
I remembered at this point that I can set up auto slaughtering for the livestock as well, so I've limited their population to a level that will produce decent quantities of eggs as well as piles of meat in waves as the lovely little chickies reach adulthood at the same time. That was a weird sentence, but I'm leaving it in. Right, now we should probably make a start on respectable living quarters too. Which in part means flooring the barracks, but eventually people are going to need their own little homes. We'll get there eventually, but for now a Wookiee has fallen from the sky. And I'd have captured them for recruitment if it weren't for the whole pyromania thing. The base is far too wooden for that. Anyway, here's another raid. A few folks from the dynasty of Nala who've come waving their little knives and axes around threateningly. As ever, I get my best combatants arrayed at the entrance, ready to embrace the fight. However, traps are overpowered, so their thirsting blades once more go unslaked. One of the raiders, Reparas, catches my eye, as they're a very good shot, and since they're kind, the conversion process would be easy. So I'll quickly throw up that little dungeon I mentioned a moment ago and throw her into it. At this point I realised that I could actually get quite a bit of steel by smelting down the chunks of slag that are littered all over the map by this point from the various drop pods full of garbage that have rained down all around us. Which means I can make my temple after all. But not yet, because once more, someone's fallen from the sky. Seems to be a bit of a problem around here. Anyway, they're named Jay, and I want them. They've got burning passions for both melee and construction, which is very useful. They got up and started limping away, but Brakeso is a speedy little fella and ran her down in no time at all. Don't worry, she's resisting now, but she'll learn to love us, I promise. And now that I've researched cloth spinning, it's probably time to plant some cotton. We're all still wearing tribal wear. Except for Camcol, who's kind of the odd one out right now. But wait, another raid. Slavers. Or just slaver, it's just one named Odd. Let's watch her die in the traps again like they all do. Huh? What's this? Am I witnessing some kind of god in human form? Nah, just a nimble lady. Not nimble enough to dodge Camcol's war pick though is she? I'd have liked to recruit her too actually as she's very balanced, but unfortunately she really did struggle to dodge that war pick and it took one of her arms off, so that's probably not going to work out. A caravan of folks that call themselves Sellswords showed up next. What that really means is slavers, so I sold them Reparas, as I realised that they lost an eye when they fell down here earlier, which kind of defeats their whole purpose to us as an archer. Moving on from our dealings with the Sellswords, slavers, we're baking bread now in this little oven as we've harvested our first wheat crop. This is one of the cosiest things I've done in Rimworld in a very long time. And once again the steel gods are smiling down on Badger Hold, dropping a meteor full of the stuff a little ways northwest of the base. It feels a little odd to just be mining steel ingots out of a wall in my medieval playthrough, but they, I mean they did come from space. All kinds of strange things could be happening up there. Regardless, it's time to start replacing some of the palisades with stone castle walls. Not just because it will look way cooler, but also because having flammable walls just seems like a really shit idea. Oh, and I didn't mention it earlier, but an ambrosia patch has sprouted up inside the walls a while ago. So we've got a steady supply of the valuable yellow stuff. No, not piss, what are you talking about? Ambrosia fruits. Jesus, you people are foul. Alright, moving on. We're 40 days into this colony and it's looking very nice. Still gotta build that temple, but we'll get there. By this point, food is completely in hand. We've actually usually got too much of it and it's constantly rotting away, but that's better than not having enough. We're also able to make basic weapons and our position is pretty easily defensible so long as nothing really serious or well armoured shows up soon. Alright, onwards. Nele decided to try and die whilst rebuilding a trap or hauling something out of there. I don't know, it doesn't really matter, she's pretty fucked up. But all of her pieces are still attached and she's not going to die. That could have really gone much worse, and it's technically completely avoidable by just having doors all throughout your trap hallway to ensure that your colonists never have to actually walk over a trap. But I really can't be fucked with all that, and I like to live with a little spicy danger in my life. It's time now for some animal madness. Firstly, we've got another round of bird flu in the chicken pen. Whatever, we've been here before. As long as one cock and some hens make it through, I really don't care. And then a warg somehow got into the base, which is a bit weird, but okay. We should probably kill that. And then afterwards I decided I'm fed up with bird flu and just slaughtered all of the sick chickens. 
All right, that's the end of the animal madness section. Next, I made a small mistake by selecting crossbows as my next research. We'll come back to that in a little while. Right now, a lonely guy named Frog Slayer has shown up to raid the colony with his spear. Okay, Frog Slayer. See you in a little bit. Whilst waiting for his terrifying attack, we'll finally build that temple so we can give Nele the moral guide role. Wait, where's Frog Slayer? Oh, some random passersby just killed him. Well, rip Frog Slayer. The amphibians sleep more soundly from now on. Alright, we've recruited Jay, who you might remember from earlier. We'll immediately fill their hand with a falchion and set her to work. My main focus at the moment is finally getting everyone out of their tribal wear and into something a little more appropriate for the setting. But now Varea, who was sewing up some more clothes, has muscle parasites, so they'll be doing quite a lot more sleeping than they will be doing tailoring. Remember earlier when I said I was researching crossbows? Well, this whole time I have not in fact been researching crossbows. Because you see, it requires a schematic, which clearly I don't have. So that was a huge waste of time. Oh well, it's time to make a small expansion for some individual housing. One of these will hold a double bed since I'm finally intending to let Nele and Bill Comnio live out there nasty. Oh shit, the chickens are on fire! Okay, alright, we're okay. I'm very lucky that the wind is heading northwest though. That warehouse is basically just a giant flower bomb waiting to go up. But I'm not going to change it to stone anytime soon, so I hope you're ready to tolerate my lack of forethought in that regard. We've more pressing matters to attend. The dynasty of Nala have sent more unfortunates to brave our passage of death, which now has arrow slits. They're not enormously useful, but it's got them. Rather luckily for us, one of the raiders, Aliva, remained very much Aliva and made the wise decision to flee, because she's Jay's daughter, which wouldn't have gone down well had things gone a little differently. As usual, I did try to capture one of them, Albert. I assume these folks are Germanic or something with names like that. Anyway, they died before making it to the dungeon, so never mind. At this point, the colonists are pretty sad. There's a number of factors playing into this. Crappy barracks, not much recreation variety, higher than average numbers of corpses lying around, you know, all the usual stuff, so we're having a party. The High Jubilee has a chance to gain a free pawn if it's fun or better. And ours was indeed fun, but no such luck on the colonist front. Another raid from the Anus Empire. Quite a few of them actually, but mostly poorly armoured. It's soon enough after the last raid that the trap hallway hasn't been fully reset, but that's okay. The greatest trap of all is thinking you can take on Varea, Camcol, and Jay in close combat. From this batch we'll capture Ereopis, who's a pretty decent all-rounder. They're iron willed, which always makes converting a bit of a pain, but you can usually still get it done with a few rituals. Oh, wait, never mind. Camcol mashed their arm off at the shoulder with his war pick, so I guess we're having a public execution instead. I haven't had many traders come to this colony yet, so when a war trader showed up, I took the opportunity to sell them as much of my stockpiled ambrosia as they could buy, taking all their silver and herbal medicine in return. And here's something very interesting indeed. A quest to fight off two impid raids with a Silink for a reward. Oh yes, we'll be having that. Upon accepting it, an archer named Paula landed to help out, which I wasn't expecting because I didn't read the quest text properly. Anyway, why do I want a Neuroformer so badly? Well, because I'm running Vanilla Psychasts Expanded. When I started thinking about this playthrough, I asked myself, what would make it a bit more interesting? And the answer, as always, was one of my colonists being a wizard. But we've got a while to wait before the imps show up, so for now we're continuing to arm ourselves. With heater shields at the moment. Varea's managed to make one of them a masterwork. Very good work, Varea. So let's zoom out again. We're 60 days into the colony, we've gained some buildings, a new combatant, and we're slowly armouring them all. Just with leather and cloth right now, but we'll get to the stronger stuff soon. Our research focus at the moment is engineering, followed by mining, and then maybe crossbow turrets if I'm feeling so inclined. But now, imps. And whilst I happily accepted this quest, a load of red people vomiting fire on the still very wooden base isn't exactly my ideal scenario. So let's see how this plays out. I made the extremely foolish decision to have archers standing at the embrasures, which in case you don't know, work both ways. 
But once I ran them clear of the firing line, haha, <laughs> fire, the silly imps ran into the waiting blades of the others and met the only fate they were likely to meet there. Not before setting it all on fire, though. Right as everyone finishes beating out the fires, the second wave is upon us. Having learned from my mistakes, this wave went much more smoothly and we've got our reward. Which Camcol will now unceremoniously jam into the side of his head. He started with the Static Lord tree unlocked, which is a pretty good one given his role as a fighter. The hardest part now is actually remembering to use his Psycasts during raids. Oh, also the imps killed Paula by the way, but that's not really my problem. And neither is this bulk goods trader. I mean, they are my problem, but they're not a problem. Whatever, you know what I mean. From them, we'll purchase the finest of wares imaginable. A breeding pair of piggies. This is actually an extremely handy thing to get started on. Livestock that can actually produce leather, that is. I love the chickies, but eggs, meat and bones aren't cutting it. We will keep them around, but probably at a further reduced number, or we're going to struggle to feed both them and the pigs. Now Jay is very sad, because I made her personally decapitate and bury all of those imp corpses, and as a result she's going on an alcohol binge. Which is fine, because we don't have any. To research any further I'll need to make an advanced research bench, which requires some basic components. I imagine I'll also need those for basically everything more advanced than a pile of sticks, so I'll set a bill to keep 25 at all times. Someone must have left the door to Ra's Discord channel open though because a load of filthy manhunting rats are sprinting at the colony. I opened the front gate because I didn't want to have to reset the traps for a bunch of rats. Oh Jesus, apparently we've been filling the warehouse with fertilized eggs, which have all just simultaneously hatched. This happens a few times before I finally cull the chickens. I just can't use all of the eggs. Fried eggs are a great food and they give an energy buff, but I don't need that many of them. Okay, so I normally wouldn't bother telling you that an ibex has gone mad and attacked some tribals because it's just not that interesting. However, in this instance, their reaction was to throw a pipe bomb at it, which also means throwing a pipe bomb at themselves. Fucking idiots. Okay, we've got that advanced research bench in place, which means we can research mining and all the other shiny stuff. It'll take a little while though, so in the meantime, let's make a nice dining hall. Mm, yes. Nice floor art, comfy-ish wooden chairs, and to finish it off, a roaring hearth. Magnificent. And in the time that took, we've researched both mining and the windmill that automates flower production. We'll need a lot more iron for that though, so let's just make this mine first. Its main purpose is to bring up rock chunks to fund the wall building effort, but it can also bring up ores in small quantities if you're really desperate. Speaking of ores, we're currently turning most of ours into armour. One by one everybody gets flat top helmets and chain hauberks. One chicken massacre later, Nele is pregnant. The two events aren't related, I hope. Anyway, I feel like we're perfectly well equipped here at this point to bring up a child, so this is a good thing. Less good though, but honestly still pretty good, is this raid from House Oswin. Five of them. Decently armoured too. Thankfully we're also decently armoured now. So by fighting them in the entrance, three versus one at a time, they never stood a chance. I'm going to capture this one, Hansen. Never mind, Hansen is dead. I'm going to capture this one, Sasha. He's missing an eye and wouldn't be a particularly great colonist, but we could use more hands here, so we're going for it anyway. Worst case, we sell him. It's time to build a windmill now in its own little section of wall. And then we're rewarded for our efforts with a pair of what can only be described as mega cows. We've got a veritable farm on the go here now. It might not be the most sensational and clickable option, but I made a lovely cute farm in Rimworld and oh some atrocities happened occasionally too, is pretty high up the list of potential titles for this video right now. Speaking of atrocities, the bugs think that I've committed one by mining into their home, and are peeping out their ugly little heads to tell us about it. It's only two spellipedes and one of the wee little buggers, but those spellipedes are more of a threat when your best armor penetrating weapon is basically a converted pickaxe. Which means the fight took quite a long time and in the process they managed to gnaw off one of Jay's legs. Which sucks, but okay, peg leg it is. You should feel quite privileged, Jay. This treatment is usually reserved for slaves and they don't get to keep the peg leg. It's time to zoom out again and gaze upon Badgerhold in all of its splendor. 
Hasn't actually changed much since last time, to be fair. We're at 83 days in. Perhaps we ought to ramp things up somewhat. So I turned the threat scale up to 250%, which should make some events more interesting. We'll see. Jay's stump is infected, and honestly, it's not looking great. Oh, oh, okay, never mind. That's got to be the closest immunity I've ever seen. Poor Jay is really struggling here lately. More pressingly though, Camcol is being hunted by a grizzly bear, which is of course potentially quite dangerous. However, as a counterpoint, lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt. Yeah, I love having a wizard on the team. He's learned chain lightning now too, which is crazy strong as we'll certainly see later. A war trader has arrived here so we can dump our heap of junk weapons onto them. Always a pleasure doing this kind of business. And here's an asthmatic Lindworm on the map. Earlier we had a Thrombo to keep us safe, but no such luck this time. And it's hungry for Jay. We can run or hobble everyone inside, but of course it's going to give chase through the trap hallway. And being a Slitheridal snake, it tends to avoid traps. I kind of thought this might be the end for the colony, but when it finally did hit a trap, it started fleeing and then hit another trap on the way out, taking just enough damage to be a death sentence. Once it was incapacitated by blood loss, I sent out Brakeso to finish the job. Nice. Traps really are OP. Alright, now mentioning this kind of breaks the flow of the story, but I just happened to have my camera over Nele and Bill Comneo as they started to make sweet love. And then they were interrupted by Nele vomiting and just went straight back to it. Oh yeah, also she's basically ready to pop out that baby. Freaks. Anyway, on that subject, the baby subject, that is. It's about time we made a hospital for it to be born in, among other things. We've had a psychic drone going on for a long while now. I've just about managed to keep everybody happy, but Sasha, our prisoner for a good while now, who was quite a ways into being recruited, has gone berserk in the dungeon. I can't think why, it's lovely in there. Anyway, I sent Camcol and Nele to subdue them with their sharp weapons and predictably his head fell off. <laughs> That's a shame. I'd really like some more hands around here just to do the general crafting tasks, you know. Perhaps then we should have a party, since that has a chance of attracting a colonist. And it'll help counter the psychic drone too. One fun party later, an 80 year old frail man named Gomi, who's neurotic and not particularly good at anything other than plant work, has joined the colony. Great. And now we've got another infestation coming up out of the mine. I realise that this could be avoided or at least alleviated by building it into a more defensible structure, but don't worry about it. This one includes a mega spider, which is going to be bad for some folks. Gomi and Jay are pretty quickly cut down before Chemcol remembers to start slinging lightning around. Bugs don't like being on fire, so whilst they're struggling we're able to take them out. But at what cost? Gomi has lost a leg and, well, Jay's dead. Her lung was destroyed and she wasn't patched up quickly enough. I should have had her tended to where she fell, so that's my bad, but it is what it is. We'll inter her in a coffin of bone, tucked away behind the under construction hospital. The gang hold a lackluster funeral to send her off and everyone gets on with their lives. They have no choice but to move on quickly as a large nursery of angry raccoons are on their way. Unarmored targets really aren't a threat to the colony at this point. They're cut down one by one by the various capable and armoured combatants standing in the entrance. Perhaps as a part of their mourning for Jay, or perhaps to celebrate the fact that it's 99 days after our arrival, the gang are having a feast. I'll allow that. They could use the boost. Oh, never mind. Gomi and Bill Comneo have the plague. Feast is off, everyone back to work. And oh Jesus, House Hess have just arrived in numbers. Quite well armoured numbers too. Oh, they coming. Everyone to your positions. Wait, where's Nelly? Oh, jeez, she's having a baby. Okay, Camcol and Varea, it's on you. Which, to be fair, is probably fine because Camcol is a lightning wizard. No problem, but there's no time to bask in the glory of victory. It's baby time. So, on day 100 we've successfully extinguished a great many lives and repaid some of the debt by bringing one new life to the rim. Little Baby Badger. 
I hope you enjoyed this. If you all really like it, then perhaps we'll see more of Badgerhold in the future. I really enjoy playing with the medieval technology restriction, but I can see it getting old after a little while longer. I wanted to make something quite relaxed and cosy where I just tell you a story about a colony, so hopefully I achieved that. Anyway, whatever you do, remain indoors. Some of my patrons and YouTube members go outdoors and they assure me it's awful. In any case, thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.